right. We are just uh, turning the Dodgers Padres game on. I was watching this a little bit earlier and then um, just put my kids to bed. So I have missed the last little bit. Let's see what I missed. Hi, Abram. What's going on? What's up, Stocky? Hey, Jojo, Zach, what's going on? Four to one Dodgers now, huh? Hey, Keith, what's up? Holden, Fenton, what's going on? Nolan, hi, Jake. Hi, John. How's the audio here? You guys can hear me okay? I forgot to plug in my microphone, but hopefully the audio is okay. Hey, Chris. Uh, I did play in the MLB, yep, for a little bit. All right, good. The audio is good. So I'm going to give everyone a second here before I start to uh, answer questions. Although, Michael Lamar, thank you so much for Super Chat. Matt, you should play me in the show. I might. Um, I just got to keep practicing. Um, my my hitting is not very good right now, but hey, KJ. What's up, King? Thanks, Dan. Yeah, it's good to go to be back. Uh, I actually had another episode that I filmed today, but we're going to uh, I'm not going to put it up live until tomorrow. So we're doing this um, instead. And I put, I put a video up this morning on the, the whole Tatis Bauer uh, thing going on from yesterday. So we're going to save that show video for tomorrow. Where can you get this at? I don't know. Um, I don't know if you saw it. I put a video up last week. Uh, San Diego studio sent me a hat and the game and sweatshirts, sweatpants, uh, t-shirt, bunch of stuff. Surprise team in the MLB. Well, there's a lot of teams I think right now that are playing really well that maybe people didn't expect to. Um, the Giants are playing well. Royals, Red Sox are playing really well. Uh, yeah, that whole Tatis thing. I think I might make a video. Do you guys think I should make a video on the Tatis peeking at the signs? Lot I got a lot of requests today to make a video. The Athletics are yeah they started what zero and five and then they won what thirteen straight then they lost today I think. Um, so maybe I'll put a video together tomorrow morning. Maybe I'll get up early and talk about stealing signs um, as far as being the hitter. It, it does happen. Um, not not a ton, but but it does it does happen. I have seen some hitters try to do it. I never personally tried to look back and, and see the signs. Um, I think most people looking at my average would assume that I, I've never really tried to steal signs before. Hey, Evan, thank you for the super chat. My fellow Cubs fans tell me I look like Nico Horner. Do you think so? Um, well, it's hard for me to tell. On my phone, your picture's very small. But yeah, maybe a little bit. I don't know. I don't really know Nico very well. Uh, what's a good age to start travel club baseball? Uh, it really depends. We start, our kids start around 10 or 11. And so, you know, is that a good age? I don't know. Probably depends on the player. Uh, you know, I started at 13, but there was nothing. You couldn't start at 12 when I played. Now you can start. <laughs> I, I saw something talking about the Texas. It was in Texas, like the Texas champion travel ball championship for like six U. it might even have been five U. I was like I can't even imagine coaching that all right everyone could everyone smash the like button we're gonna get a lot of likes on tonight's uh live here Dan thank you for the super chat Braves whole team forgot there were two games today <laughs> so I have not um the only game I've watched today is uh, this Dodgers Padres game. I watched the first four innings and then I missed the fifth and the top of the sixth. Um, but I did watch the, the beginning of the game. Did I ever see Ron Slusher play ping pong? I actually have not seen him play ping pong. No. He is the best, though. 
At what level did coaches let me fail on my own? Um, I don't remember the exact age, but pretty much since I can remember, I've always been pretty fast, so I feel like I've always been able to steal whenever I want to. Burns is legit. Yeah, he is legit. Thoughts on expanding the strike zone? I don't think the strike zone should be expanded at all. It's already hard enough to hit. Uh-oh, Chris Taylor going deep. See ya. Ball was smashed. Triple A affiliate of the Padres when I played were was the Portland Beavers. How do you what was that question say right there? How do you help make contact? I think a lot of it has to do with your bat path. There's some natural thing, you know, hand eye coordination and stuff helps, but I think a lot of it comes down to bat path. Anytime that I wasn't hitting well, it was because my path, my, my swing and my bat path was really, um, you know, it was all messed up. It's a good look right there if you're watching the game. See Taylor's barrels behind the ball and it's behind it for a long time. Do I think Bryce Harper is a good player? Yeah, I think he's a great player. Dan, thank you, Dan, again. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, your super chat disappeared on me. Going through one hit shutout. First game, Madison threw perfect game. Second, hold on a minute. One hit shutout, first game. Perfect game, the second game. Both seven, eight. Oh, my Lord. I did not see any of that, Dan. That's crazy. Carolina Mudcats, I've seen a game down there before. Um, I don't know anything else about them other than that, though. I did like the Pacific Northwest, yeah. Pitch sequencing tips. Well, I won't say I'm an expert on it, but I can tell you from a, from a hitter's perspective, I think um, I would say that the first thing is you have to go by kind of your strengths as a pitcher. There may be like, you may think there's like the perfect sequence, but it all really first starts with your strengths. Um, you can then take into account the, the pitcher's weaknesses, I mean, the hitter's weaknesses. Um, but I think you got to start with your strengths. Sometimes pitchers, you know, they try to pitch based off the, the hitter's weakness. Um, but I think you have to start with your strengths. Uh, and then I, do, I think that a lot of it goes, a lot of it has to do with how, uh, the hitter reacts to that pitch. Um, and so you're reading swings, you're reading the timing. Um, it gives you an idea of maybe what the hitter's sitting on, what his approach is. So I, I would probably stick with your strengths, how the hitter's reacting to the pitches that you're throwing. And so there's really no like perfect sequence. I think it really just depends on how the at-bat unfolds. Um, Super Chad. Zach, I missed your Super Chat. It must have disappeared quick because it's not here. Was that Zach that said that? Zach, can you just put your Super Chat again? You don't have to, don't like give another Super Chat. Just put your question uh, and I will, uh, I'll read it. Maybe just write the question and then Super Chat next to it. That way I, I know that was the question. Frisco Rough Riders. Oh yeah, I've played against Frisco a lot. I used to crush balls at Frisco. That's when I was feeling good. I do know Mikey McCarthy. Yes, I do. Fake tags are illegal in high school. I don't know. I I have our guys fake a tag every now and then. All right, Zach. Who are your favorite athletes outside of baseball? And thank you for the super chat. My favorite athletes, um, probably Tom Brady is probably my all-time favorite athlete. Um, 
who are some of my other favorite athletes? Let's just go by sport. Football. Randy Moss might be my favorite of all time, but currently Tom Brady. Uh, if you look at basketball, I like a lot of basketball players. Um, who's my favorite? Um, hi, Harry. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think basketball. Who's my favorite athlete? I'm a Celtics fan, so, you know, I like mostly Celtics guys. I like Tatum. I like Brown. Uh, why was I doing good when I wasn't hitting off the tee, but over quarantine, I hit off the tee every day, but now I cannot hit in a game or practice. Uh, is Did all you do was hit off a tee? Um, you know, work, tea work, tea work is fine to work on certain things, especially if you're by yourself. Yeah. Smash that like button. That a baby Darren. Let's get those likes up over a hundred. Thank you, everyone. So thank you. Um, Otani, I saw he had a 400 and like 40 something foot home run, but I haven't seen it yet. The thing with tees is tees are good. Uh, tees are fine to work off of, but you can't just do tea work because um, stop reading super chats. No, Frankie, I'm going to read the super chats, but thank you for the suggestion. Um, hitting is, you know, there's time constraints in hitting. And so when the ball's sitting on a tee, there's no time constraints. You can take all day long. That's not like the game. And so you can't just practice off of the tee. Um, you have to be able to, to have some type of practice where, where there are time constraints because that mimics the game more closely. So I would be careful with just hitting off the tee. The other thing with the tee is the ball's always just sitting in one particular spot. And so, thank you. I'm glad my videos make, my MLB The Show videos make you laugh. They make me laugh too. Laura makes fun of, <laughs> Laura makes fun of me a lot because after I upload the video, I'll watch it. Because a lot of times I'm just talking in the video and I don't edit the video. So I'm just talking and I, half the time I don't even know what I'm saying. And then I'll go back and watch them because I'm like, oh man, I didn't realize I said that. And, and sometimes I'll laugh at myself and Laura will say, oh, you think you're so funny, don't you? Um, but I guess that's a good thing if I'm laughing at night. I, usually the things that I laugh at, people laugh at too. So that's good. John O, thank you so much for the super chat. We were at the Angels game on Saturday, off the wall, past the 399. Correa hit one to the railroad tracks, too. Um, Saturday's game. Uh, what game did I do YouTube on? Was that on Thursday's? Was that Thursday's game? I can't remember what night I did. Uh, so I did not see Saturday's game. I saw Thursday's game. Thank you very much for the Super Chat. Uh, Dynasty Ninja, thank you for the Super Chat. What teams currently for the MLB is surprising you with their record and play, uh, style of play or play style? Um, so, well, I'll say right off the bat, the Red Sox. I mean, I'm from Boston. Not that I am. I'm actually not like a big Red Sox fan. I was growing up, but um, I don't follow them as closely now. Uh, but I will say based off the way they played last year, uh, they are playing obviously much better right now. So they've surprised me. Um, I have not watched the Giants play very much at all this year, but looking at their record, they surprised me. Same with the Royals. Um, I'm trying to think of who else off the top of my head. I think the Yankees struggling so much has surprised me in the opposite way. Um, I have faced a knuckleballer, yes, only in the minor leagues, though. How many guys did I play with in professional ball that played D3? Probably not a ton, but they're, I couldn't, I can't even tell you one off the top of my head, honestly. Um, but I'm sure I played against or with somebody. It felt like most of the players that I played with, guys that I got drafted with, I felt like were mostly Division One players. But again, it's... If you look at the numbers, there's plenty of D2 and D3 and Jugo guys that get drafted. When did I start getting private hitting lessons? Um, I've never really had a, I had, you know, maybe uh, 
one or two private hitting lessons in my life. Private hitting lessons when I was playing was very, it's unlike today. Like today, there's private instructors everywhere. When I was a young kid, there weren't. There were Lessons weren't like really a big thing. Uh, indoor facilities were not a big thing. Strength and conditioning facilities were not a big thing. None of that stuff was really around. So uh, my uh, private instruction came from my dad. Where did I find a PS5? So uh, a player that uh, I work with that plays with our teams in the winter and also I do lessons with, uh, he had an extra one and they were nice enough to uh, barter with me and uh, I was able to get their PlayStation 5. So that was very, very nice of them. Oh, that ball's going to ah, fall foul. Best time or age to start hitting with wood bats? Well, I started my senior year of, I, I, that's actually a lie because I hit it in high school with summer ball. So um, I think my junior year of high school, I started hitting with it. I would say, you know, at least for us, 15U and up, summer ball is wood bat so we get our guys swinging 15u but a lot of them will swing 14u to start to prepare some will swing 13u um, i would say probably like 14u ish 15u ish is probably a good time how hard did i throw when i was 13 i have no idea i always had a pretty good arm have no idea how hard i threw though um although i'm not that old i was 13 uh 23 years ago so you know, it's a lot different back then. Like today, everyone has like a pocket radar and there's radar guns everywhere. Uh, when I was 13, I don't remember ever seeing a radar gun. Radar guns were like for major league scouts and, and that was probably it. Dead Letterman, thank you so much for the super chat. Can my bad, oh, sorry. Can my band make a new intro song for your videos? Um, sure, you can try. I mean, I don't know. My, my song is kind of like, a lot of people, when I talk to them and meet them, they'll mention my song. So your song would have to be pretty, pretty good to take over the song that I currently have. But give it a shot and send it to me. And if it's, uh, if I think it works, I'll do it. Uh, Blog King, thank you so much for Super Chat. How did you feel about the Jack versus Ben Askin fight? I have no idea. I don't know. Uh, I don't do fighting i don't know fighting at all i couldn't tell you uh where's that question again i lost it oh is that the jake paul fight is that what that was uh, again, I didn't watch that at all. I didn't, uh, I, I saw like, I think I saw like one punch of it, but I don't, I don't watch, um, boxing or UFC or any other stuff. I don't know anything about it. My boxing days were like Mike Tyson days. That was my favorite boxer of all time. When Mike Tyson stopped boxing, that's kind of when I stopped watching. Jaden, thank you so much for Super Chat. Have you ever heard of Devo Bats? Um... I don't think so, but I'm typing it in right now. Let's see. Uh, nope, can't say I've ever heard of these guys. I'll have to try it out though. Uh, heard you speak highly of Linscombe. Is he a Hall of Famer? Um, I, so I don't know what his stats were. I, I feel like he probably didn't pitch long enough. That's a total guess though. I'd have to look at his stats. Why do I think he imploded so quickly? Um, you know, I don't know. Uh Oh, little boot there by the Dodgers. So it's hard to say without really being, I, I was never around them. I never played with the giants. Um, I know he was a smaller guy. He did things. You know, he had to use a whole lot of his body to throw as hard as he did. I don't know if that had anything, had anything to do with it. So I'm totally guessing if I try to come up with a reason why. I'm not really sure. I just know he was nasty when I faced him a lot. And he was always just ridiculously good. Grant, thank you so much for the super chat. Can I get recruited for college only from high school ball? You could, but 
high school ball is tough to get recruited in usually because colleges are playing at the same time that high school is, so it's hard for them to get out and watch games. But we've had guys recruited just through high school ball, but typically that's not like the prime time for recruiting. EJ Slam, thank you for the super chat. I almost caught Willie Calhoun's home run last night during the White Sox Rangers game. Have you ever caught a ball in the stands of fan? Never. I went to the Red Sox White Sox game last week, and um, my son kept saying, "Why aren't we get? Why aren't we catching any balls? Like, why aren't we getting them?" And I was like, "Dude, I've been to like eight thousand games in my life, and I've never caught a ball in the in the stands ever. Never had a ball hit to me." So. He was expecting like every foul ball to, to go to us. Daniel Shell, thank you so much for Super Chat. Would you like to see MLB use steel bats like NCAA? Um, no, I don't think MLB should use metal bats. If they did, uh, somebody would probably get killed. And as little offense as there, are, that, as there is sometimes, I just think it would, it would it would make offensive numbers like really ridiculous. Even though people would be like, oh, metal bats aren't that good anymore and all this stuff. Like I'll take a metal bat any day of the week over a wood bat if I just want more success. Frank, come on, Matt, earn that money. I'm trying, Frank. Uh, Hayden Hatfield, thank you so much for the super chat. There's no question there, but I appreciate the super chat. Oh, here's another question from Hayden. I'll answer this one. Incredible pitcher in high school and college ends up as a position player in the majors. Why would that happen? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I guess it depends on incredible. You know, like he, he was incredible in high school and college. Maybe. I mean. High school and college is much different than um, the major leagues. So you can be incredible there and not be incredible in, in the major leagues. Uh, most guys don't even sniff the major leagues. Great players in college don't even sniff it. So, you know, maybe he just didn't have the stuff that was going to work at the major league level. You don't typically see someone go from pitcher to position player, but I guess I've seen it happen before. Blood King, thank you again for the Super Chat. Would you ever play a Japanese baseball video game? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm sure I'd play. I probably wouldn't play it as much as like MLB The Show because I don't know any of the players. Um, but baseball is baseball, so. Would I play in Japan at the professional level? Yeah, if they let me. No one ever wanted me to play over there, but I would. How fast should... How fast can, should a 12 year old throw? Uh, I answer these questions pretty much every week. And, and my thought on this always is, I don't like to throw out numbers out there because when you're 12, there's just so much physical, there's so much differences between players physically. Like you can get, you can have a six foot tall 12 year old and you can have like a four foot tall 12 year old. So it's unfair sometimes to say like, oh, if you're 12, you should throw this hard. Well, if you're six feet tall, you're going to, you know, 200 pounds, you're going to throw a lot harder than a four foot tall, you know, 62 pound 12 year old. So, um, I don't really know the answer to that. Dr. Gala. <laughs> Thank you so much for the super. There's no question there though. I don't know why sometimes it doesn't show questions. ABC the light. Thank you for the super chat. I'm 27. Haven't played ball since high school. Do you think I can still make it to the majors with my age, regardless of talent? Worried about age. Well, your age is, uh, to be 100 percent honest, uh, your age is is really high. So you'd have to be really, really, really good. Um, is it impossible? No. 27 is usually like if you're in the minors and you're 27, you've never been in the big leagues. You're starting to get old. Like I started to feel old when I was 27 and I'd been to the big leagues when I was 23 or 22. How old was I? One of those two. Um, so like you're 27, you haven't played baseball in 10 years. Um, you know, that's clearly going to be difficult, but who am I to say? I mean, if you step on a mound tomorrow and throw 98 miles an hour, then yeah, you might be able to go in the big, go to the big leagues. 
Thanks, Tib. Tips on stealing off lefty. Stealing second or stealing third? Let's just go stealing second. Um, I'm going to assume like it's a lefty with a good move. I think what you want to do is you want to figure out is, if a lefty's pitching, I want to figure out is this guy reading me or is he just predetermining whether he's going to pick or pitch? Because if he's just predetermining it, if he comes set and he's already decided I'm pitching or I'm picking, well, then I'm going to try to um, I'm going to try to pick an opportunity when I just don't think he's going to pick. Uh, and how do I do that? I kind of set the lefty up. So if I get on first base, I'll get a small lead. And when he lifts his leg, I'll, I'll fake like I'm running and to see if he picks. If he pitches, I know he's not reading me because I fake broke and he didn't pick. So he's predetermining it. So then I'm trying to decide, okay, when do I think he's going to pick and when is he going to pitch? You know, maybe he picks over and I go, okay, he's not going to pick again. If he picks twice over and, and I think he's a predetermined guy, once I see him pick twice, I'm like, there's no way he's picking three times. I'm off the next pitch. Um, so we could probably talk about that for a long time. One zero baseball, you got a 95 diamond Mike Trout. Oh my Lord, that's a big time card. Yeah, that's going for like three, I think on, I saw it today for like 360. You got 335 for it, I'll take it. Brews balling. Thank you so much for the super chat. What's up? I'm a third. I am 13 and I'm looking to learn a new pitch. I know a slider and a curveball. What new pitch do you want? You know what you should do, actually, Brews? I got a. Um, if you go on our, you're on our YouTube channel. If you go on our pitching playlist, you're going to see one, one that was just in this chat. He shows you on the hard throw. A 14 fastball, change up, cutter. Like, I think he's got almost every pitch on there. So. I would see what pitch you wanna, which pitch you wanna throw. You throw a slider and a curveball, so maybe add a, a maybe a changeup. Um, but you can go on there, and you could add a couple more pitches if you wanted to. Um, is eighteen too late to start baseball? Uh, no, I don't think any age is too late to start baseball. Just play and have fun. Jacob, tips off stealing off of lefties. I just answered that a few seconds ago. Uh, I cannot say who <laughs> who yelled at me that I look like my dog died before BP, before your debut. Um, I don't know if I can disclose that information. I'll give you a, a hint. He was a catcher on our team. So you can look it up and now you'll know at least you'll have a pretty good idea who it was. Uh, can you tell me a baseball joke? Um, yes, my major league batting average. Huh. Huddy Mike? Hoodie Mike? Thank you so much for the super chat. Matt, I'm about to start teaching high school and I hope the coach as well. What is your advice to study and learn to get the job and succeed? So, um, I'll say this, I think the best way to get better at coaching is, is coaching. I think you'll learn, you're gonna learn a lot just by, by coaching and by um, you know, being around other coaches. Like I learned a ton just by that, my first year of coaching. And I played baseball, a ton of baseball, and obviously I played at, like the, I played at the highest level you can play. And I played professionally for eight years and being a coach is just different than being a player. So uh, how, how are some ways that I learned? I think uh, by coaching, by being open to not thinking I know everything just because I played at a high level, because like I said, coaching is different. Um, by talking with players and, um, you know, communicating with players and figuring out how players learn and, you know, because as, as a one thing I realized as a player, that transition of being a coach is that you're used to, you know, as a player, I'm always focused on myself. And so I know how I learn. I, I know how I see the game, but it's different seeing the game from a coach's perspective. That's what I took. Like it took me one full year to learn how to see the game from the coach's perspective um, and not just be solely because, again, as a player, I'm always seeing the game from my perspective. So. Um, 
that helped. And then, then I just try, you know, I went to con coaching conventions and uh, YouTube is a great resource and podcasts. And like today, actually earlier today, I was watching um, first base stuff from Perry Hill. Um, so there's so many resources out there to be a better coach. Uh, I like watching a lot of, uh, you know, if then if you want to get into like culture stuff, I, I personally like Urban Meyer. I watch a lot of, um, of uh, I'm having a mental block right now. But a lot of stuff that Urban Meyer did while he was at Ohio State, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube uh, covering that. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Thanks for the super chat. What bat did I use in the MLB or MILB? I used mostly a Louisville Slugger C271, 34 inch, 31 ounce. Blog King, thank you for Super Chat. The Japanese game is called Pro Baseball Spirit. All right, I'll check it out. I'll see if I can find it. Ray Ray Montoya, thank you so much for Super Chat. Would you punch a pitcher who hit you on purpose? Ah, uh, so I'll say this. I've, I've been hit lots of times in my career. I don't know if I was ever hit on purpose. Sometimes it's really hard to tell. Uh, I was never hit. I was never hit where I was like, that was on purpose. Now, I would say when I was younger, if I, I wouldn't have, um, I would say now if I were to play and I thought somebody hit me and intentionally tried to hurt me for something, I might punch them in the face. Yeah. I don't know if this is because I've coached for a long time or not, but, or maybe it's because I have kids now or what it is, but I've lost a lot of my patience. And, uh, hold on. I just, I always said like, oh man, coaches, like <laughs> when I started off coaching, like I never, I never got upset about anything, uh, anything a player did. I was like, it's okay. Get them next time. Like, oh, it's all right. Oh, it's a hard game whatever. And then the more and more you coach, the more you just get <laughs> frustrated. Like now I know why when you get to be like, when you see like 50, 60 year old coaches they are always pissed off. It's because. Um, I don't know. I just feel like it's naturally happening. So same with me as a human. I just get more angry at things as I get older. So um, back in the day, I would have been like, you know, the 20 something. I mean, it's OK. You hit me in the head. It's all right, buddy. Don't worry about it. You know, just try to have a little better control next time. But now that I'm old and angry, I guess I probably would not maybe attack someone that hit me on purpose. Uh, my batting average in the major leagues was, it was right around 200, 197 maybe, or something like that. Um, which actually does, it was only like, I don't know how many at-bats I had, 60-something at-bats. So you get like one extra hit and your average goes up a lot. So uh, is Wade LeBlanc the greatest player of all time? Yes, definitely. When I'm catching, should I be in a normal stance or a one knee? Well, as you can see, the major leagues is going to a lot of one knee stuff. I think there's, you know, there's plenty of coaches and, and catching people that I, I think there's a reason they're doing that. I think they obviously feel like it allows them to receive the ball a little bit better. Um, some people actually feel that it, it helps them block the ball a little bit better. There's certain people that think that it doesn't. So um, I, I think that, you know, I would do your research. I'm not an expert in catching at all, but I would do your research. I would try both. I would see which one you feel like you receive better, which one you block better from, and then, you know, go from, go from there. So a couple people... Like Enrique, you asked me if Wayla Blanc was the greatest player of all time, which I answered, but then you asked it 152 more times. I already answered your question, Enrique. Are you not listening? All right, now Enrique. Now I got to put Enrique in timeout because not only did I answer your question, but then you wrote the question 450 more times, and now I can't see anyone else's... Um, questions so oh guys we have a lot of super chats here driver three joe thank you for the super chat it's a bad idea for kids to be throwing all kinds of curveballs and other crazy breaking balls see many players 
by high school or college needing TJ. So I don't know if that's because of them throwing curveballs. Uh, what I, I we allow our younger kids to throw curveballs. We did, you know, if I see a kid throwing nothing but curveballs, then I'm gonna probably put a stop to that. I think you need to throw it correctly, and then I, I think you, you don't want to overuse it or abuse it. So. Um, I, I will say though that I am not an expert in knowing how much, you know, damage that can possibly do to your arm. I, I, um, I probably have to do a little bit more research on that. Uh, Johnny loves steel balls. Thank you for your super chat. Hey Matt, what was the fastest pitch you ever saw? Do you think you could get a hit in your prime against Degrom if you were playing for the seventeen Astros? Uh, well, Degrom's one of the nastiest pitchers I've ever seen. This year he's having is just ridiculous. So um, I probably couldn't get many hits off him in my prime. I mean, maybe one uh, out of maybe 10, 15, 20 at bats. Uh, but I'm glad I don't have to face him. And the fastest pitch I ever saw was probably 101, 100, 101, somewhere around there from, from uh, Daniel Bard. EJ Slam, thank you again for the super chat. If you could put only one of these three in Cooperstown, who would it be? Barry Bonds, Pete Rose, or Shoeless Joe Jackson? My pick is Pete Rose. So I think Pete Rose uh, clearly should be in the Hall of Fame. I think Barry Bonds should be in the Hall of Fame. Shoeless Joe Jackson um, played before my time. So uh, I probably would have to go between Pete and Barry. And I think Barry Bonds during those few years where he was roiding it up was probably the most dangerous hitter in the history of baseball. Um, but let's put Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame. Why not? Jaden, thank you so much for Super Chat. How do you feel about me sending you a couple of bats and you sending me some honest feedback on them? Um, sure. You can do that. If you want to send the bats, uh, send them to Matt Antonelli and send them to the New England Premier Sportsplex. And the address you can find online. It's in Danvers, Massachusetts. Uh, that's where I've been having people send stuff to me. Just easy. Uh, that's where I'm working out a lot. And so... That's probably the easiest thing for me. RC from the NYC. What's up, angry coach Matt? Um, hey, hey, Laura, what's up, Chet? Uh, hope all is good. How many, uh, many teams are still hitting power hitters second lap? Your thoughts? Yeah, I know that's a trend that started probably a couple of years ago. So I think that, uh, you know, typically when I when I do my lineup, I put my, my best guy that gets on base the most at the at the leadoff spot and uh and in that two hole I'm putting you know I don't know if I'm putting my best power hitter but I'm just putting one of my best hitters on the team so uh, when I think of the two hole I don't think of somebody that hits for a ton of power but can't get on base I think of somebody that I just think of like one of my best hitters um but the easiest way for me usually is I just put whoever I think is going to get on base the most, I put them at the top of the order. And then, you know, usually in that three spot, I'll put somebody that, you know, gets on base a lot, but also can drive the ball and drive runners in. So that's kind of how I do it. But if you want to put, again, a power hitter second in the lineup, I, would, I wouldn't personally put just a power hitter there. I'd put one of my better all-around hitters there. Um, is Mendoza the luckiest MLB player in history since now everyone knows about the Mendoza line? Would you want there to be an Antonelli line? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, thanks for the super shot. Super chat, by the way. Um, Brando, Brando J23. Uh, yeah, I would love to have an Antonelli line. I don't know what it would mean, but uh, is that below the Mendoza line? Is the Antonelli line? Sure, let's do it. Yeah, Yankee slow start. It's a uh, lot slower than I thought. Um, again, I have not followed the Yankees. It is so hard to keep up with like every team. I did it for the first like week or so. And then I have so many teams playing right now that it's hard to continue to keep up. So yeah, I'm surprised by it. But I can't really tell you why I'm surprised because I haven't, I mean, I, I thought the Yankees, my question going into the year was the pitching staff. You know, they signed a couple of guys that hadn't been healthy, and I thought those were going to be wild cards. Um, offensively, they've got a ton of power. 
Uh, they do strike out, it seems like, quite a bit. So that was a question mark. But uh, did I find my Sox jersey? I have not, but I forgot to ask Laura. So when I see Laura come down these stairs right here, she's putting, she's upstairs with my kids, with our kids. <laughs> um, I'll ask her. If I forget, if you guys see me say hello or hear me say hello to Laura and I don't ask where the White Sox jersey is, will you just remind me in the chat? Sam, thank you for the super chat. It frustrates me watching Bellinger strike out so much and he is always pulling the ball. He pulls his head and looks very lost at the plate a lot. Why? Well, I think Bellinger has what looks like a, it is a big, pretty big aggressive swing. Um, you know, Let's look up Bellinger's stats real quick. He's hurt right now, right? So you look at his stats. Yeah, 2019 was this huge year. I mean, he was just ridiculous. He almost walked as much as he struck out. Um, so I'll say this, I, and I don't have a spray chart. I don't know how much he goes the other way, how much he pulls the ball. I think every hitter, you know, I think there's certain players that have like his strength, obviously, especially in 2019 as a 23 year old was driving the ball. I mean, the guy had 47 homers. Um, he slugged over 600. He had an on base percentage over 400. And then obviously last year, um, you know, had a, had a, did not have a good year and he hasn't really played at all this year. So, um, you know, but even like, even last year, his strikeout and walk numbers are not bad. So and he struck out a hundred. He struck out a hundred times in 2019. So I wouldn't get too too crazy concerned with it. Me personally, I mean, the guy clearly went. The guy last year was kind of a weird year with all the COVID stuff going on. He's got to get healthy and get back. And you know, he's shown us as a 23 year old that he can be one of the best players in the game. So I wouldn't get too frustrated with him just yet. I think he'll be okay. Michael, thank you again for the super chat. Hey, Matt, I sent you some cards about a month ago. Do you think you could let me know if you got them? Um, oh, if you get them. Um, so I get tons of cards in the mail. I usually send them out every couple of weeks. If you sent them, they're probably somewhere around here. Uh, I have not opened up my card mail in probably at least a couple of weeks. So... Um, I don't know where they are, but but they're probably somewhere in my house. Um, and then one of these days, I've been so busy that I've done nothing but basically working stuff. So I will get to them at some point very soon, though, and get them back to you. Um, thanks for the Super Chat. Eddie, thank you for the Super Chat. Is 6-1 too short to play third? No, not at all. 6-1 is perfectly fine. I've played with third baseman shorter than six feet tall. and um, So, yeah, I would not... Six six one's good, like a really good size. So it's not too short at all. Uh, Jaden, thank you again for super chat. How do you feel about me sending you a couple of bats and you sending me some honest feedback on them? Um, did I already answer that? I feel like I did. Um, but yeah, that sounds great. I will send you some honest feedback on them. Send them on over. EJ, thank you so much for super chat. Have you ever been to Cooperstown? I have. I've been there a couple of times. Um. If you, EJ, if you've seen my, uh, my story on Reggie Jackson, if you haven't, if, if any of you have not heard my Reggie Jackson story, I suggest you type it into YouTube. Just make sure, I have two of them up there. Make sure you watch the most recent one because that's the one I include the pictures of me and Reggie. But that was, at, that was at the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. But I've been there multiple times. Kevin Cruz, thank you for Super Chat. Big fan, great channel. Thanks, Kevin. Started coaching six to eight-year-olds. All right. What are some good hitting drills to have them get better contact swing path? You know, that's a good question for a six to eight year old. I don't even know if I would have six or eight year olds do drills. Like my son's six. Um, I think the biggest thing with a six year old is like, get them to be, to, I, I would say get them properly lined up. So like get them um, 
in good posture. Essentially, when their front foot is about to land the hip, they need to be in good posture. So butt out and chest over, athletic stance. They need to make sure they're striding straight. Um, I think if you can get them to do those two things, then they're going to be, you know, I see six to eight year olds do all these crazy things. You know, they, they step way out here. And when their front foot's about to land, they're like this. Like you've got to be, when my front foot's about to land, butt out, chest over, I call it pull back, but just basically we have your upper body back and ready to hit and stride straight. And if you can get them to do that, then you're in really good shape. What drill does that? I wouldn't even worry about drills, honestly. I would just um, give them tons of reps have them go through dry stuff without even swinging, you know, just boom, just landing in a good solid position. Uh, and I think that will help them. Good luck, by the way, that's a, that's at a tough age to coach. I'm actually, my son uh, on Thursday coming up this week has his first uh, baseball game of the year. So he's in a six to, uh, what's his age group? Six and seven year olds, I think so. Laura kept telling me, you got to coach him, you got to coach him. But I, uh, I coach so many of my own teams. I said, I'll let somebody else coach that team. I'll just, I'll watch, but, um, Daniel, thank you so much for the super chat. At what point do you worry about errors piling up? Um, I don't know if there's a number. I, th I think you get a feel for it. Like. Are you meaning as like, it's a tough question. I guess it depends on the level and what the objective is. You know, if you're at the major leagues and your objective is to win versus your younger age and your objective is um, to develop, you know, it's tough to say, but I'm not sure if there's a number again, but I would say when you see a player starting to just totally lose confidence, uh, I've been there before where I, uh, I've made errors in the field and I've allowed them to kind of snowball on me and you start, you know, you can't get past the last error and then it affects the way you feel the next ball. And, um, I remember in college, I let this happen to me one time. I usually don't, I'll tell you a quick story about my college coach. Cause we didn't always or ever see eye to eye, but I was playing NC State and I was struggling defensively and I made two errors in the game. And um, and then I uh, I made a third error, but they didn't call it an error, but it should have been called an error. And I came in the dugout and my coach said like, you know, basically he said like, I left you out there to embarrass yourself the way you're, <laughs> you're playing. I could have I could have taken you out and saved you, but I left you out there to embarrass yourself. It was something like that. Um, so I've been there before where you, you start to really allow, you know, your errors to, you, you can't clear your mind of them. So um, I would say when a player gets to that point, then I would start to worry about errors piling up and I would probably figure out a way to either um, this is a hard question to answer. There's so many variables in this, but Why do some players, Jose Batista, Josh Jones, and Max Scherzer develop their peak so late in their careers? Um, I don't know. Did, so Jose Batista went through some swing changes. Josh Donaldson went through swing changes. Max Scherzer, was he late in his career? I feel like Scherzer's always dominated. I remember facing Scherzer in the Arizona Fall League and being like, this guy's absolutely filthy. So I feel like he was a little bit younger, but let's check because I could be wrong. Max Scherzer, how, um, let's see when Max Scherzer was, uh, when he started to dominate. So Scherzer started to dominate at, well, he won the Cy Young as a 28 year old, um, ERA plus. I mean, as a 23 year old, he had a 151 ERA plus. So he was, um, he dominated as a 23 year old as well. Didn't throw a lot, that was his first year, but. How old should you be to pitch somewhere near 80? Uh, well, just judging off of our team, like we have some 
15 year olds throwing 80. We have one 14 year old, I believe throwing 80. Uh, I would say usually around like 15 to 16 years old. If you're throwing 80, you're doing pretty good. 21 grand, thank you so much for Super Chat. Do you think any team right now is playing above their skill level? Also sent you an email, but no rush on responding. Um, so the teams that I mentioned earlier that are that are considered overachieving based on you know what people thought of them coming into the season, teams like uh, even the Red Sox, teams like the Giants, teams like the Royals, um, you know, I'm not going to lie and say like, oh, I know every guy on these teams and I watch all these teams and everything like, you know, it's, it's interesting with baseball. Uh, I never get, I, ne I when it comes to baseball, I know obviously like I watch the major leagues. I know players in the major leagues. I understand baseball, um, but I don't have enough time during the baseball season to get so in depth on each team to know exactly what they have. Like, I have no idea, you know, like the giants, I can't even tell you like half the guys on their team right now. Um, the one sport I can do that in is football. I can name like every starting lineup almost for pretty much all the teams. Um, but football season is the slow season for my, for me, for my personal business and it's only baseball. So I can get like really in the football games. Like I can watch, I can sit down. The other thing about football is you can sit down on a Sunday. I can and go through and watch all the games, you know, baseball is too hard. Like I have Anthony baseball seven days a week right now. And, uh, and baseball is going every night. I can't keep up with all of it. So it makes it tough for me to do that. Best way to get recruited during high school. Um, my first suggestion is to go watch. I have a, a, a playlist on our, wow, I just realized this Dodgers Padres game has like gotten really close. Sorry, I started chatting and then I forgot to watch. First thing I would do, go to our playlist. We have a recruiting playlist and watch those videos. I break down like exactly how to get recruited. So I would do that. Excuse me. Hey, Laura, do you know where my White Sox jersey is? You think I would have put it down there? It... Oh, here's a question. Why do they say never make the first or third out at third base? That's Laura's one thing she knows about baseball. I know the answer to that. Why? Because if you're on second, you're already in scoring position, so you don't need to try to steal third. Right? That would be with three outs. What about with one out? Why don't you make the first out at third? I don't know, did you? Oh, because if you're at second and there's only one out, somebody else no, could come and hit you home. If you're at second with nobody out, you, the batter can move you over to third base, so you don't always want to take the risk. Although a lot of major league teams actually don't even coach that anymore. The first and third, don't make the first and third out of third. A lot of teams teach you to be aggressive, and um, so. You can, it's up to you to say whether that's right or wrong, but. Uh, your coach told you he won't throw you until you throw 85% strikes every outing. Um, well, you're probably never gonna pitch then <laughs> because 85% uh, strikes, that's a lot of strikes. Major league players uh, don't come close to that number. Do I think any players in our organization can make it to the major leagues? Yes, I do. We have two players currently playing pro ball um, and we'll have more every year. Uh, this past year, we didn't have anyone drafted because there was only, what, five rounds, but. Yeah, struggle. You struggle worrying about what coaches and other players think. What can you do? It's a great question. I, I, I think most players get caught up in this. I did too as a player. You know, you don't want to let your coaches down. You don't want to let other players down. Um, so like the easy answer is, you know, focus in on the task at hand, focus in on what your job is, what you're, you know, trying to accomplish. 
focusing on the process, not on the results. Like, but it's not always easy. Um, uh, but one way I try to do it is when I go to the plate, I take a deep breath. I feel like that helps calm me down before I get in the box. I go through the same routine all the time. I, I, I get in, I look at my bat, I find a focal point on my bat that kind of brings me to the present. Um, makes me kind of forget about all the other things. I go through my pre-pitch routine. I, I think of a, a, a final thought. So essentially like something, something simple and like actionable, like, um, like quick hands or something like that. Something where I can just focus in. All right, I'm going to have quick hands here. Um, and, and that basically is like the final thing I'm going to think of those type of things, those help you focus in on, um, you know, on the being in the, in the present on what you're doing right then and there. And then you're not thinking about like, Oh, what's this person thinking? Oh, what's the guy in the stands thinking? And you know, the person over here screaming that I stink and, you know, nice batting average can't even hit your weight. Like trying to forget about all that stuff. Best way to teach someone to go the other way, a 12 year old. Well, I think going the other way has a lot to do with your bat path. If you've got a poor swing, you can tell somebody all. So what happens a lot is this. I talk to my dad a lot and coaches about this a lot. Um, hold on one second. Rich Durbano, thank you for my first super chat. Apple needs three things on Wednesday. Blowout numbers, stellar guidance, and a hefty dividend hike. Got to have all three to see 150 this spring. Rich, I hope we see all three. Uh, blowout numbers, I think definitely possible. Stellar guidance. And I don't know. If we're going to get stellar guidance, it would be nice. And then a hefty dividend hike. I think we'll get a, a, a dividend hike. I don't know if it'll be hefty, um, but I would love all three of those. So going the other way. So let me tell you real quick. I talked to my dad about this a lot and other coaches. Um, so what I see a lot is uh, say you want a player to go the other way. But let's say that their swing doesn't allow them to do it for whatever reason. They're doing something, you know, they're they're rotating hard off the ball with the upper body, you know, whatever you want it, whatever it is. And so you, they they pull the ball and you say, hey, come on, stay inside the ball, go the other way. And then they take their swing again and they roll over. And you, hey, come on now, stay on that ball, go the other way. And then they take their swing again. And so then you start getting pissed off and you think they're uncoachable. This kid doesn't want to listen to me, you know, um, when a lot of times because I've been there before. I'm trying to do what the coach wants me to do, but I just can't do it physically. I don't know how to physically do it. And even though the coach is going to tell me to go the other way, I'm trying. I can't do it. Doesn't mean I'm not trying. Just means I don't know how to do it. I think being part of part of being a really good coach is being able to not just tell a player what they need to do, but then be able to show a player how to do it. You know, why can't you do it? This is what we have to do to fix it. For me, a lot of times it comes back to bat path. Some of it could be, you know, your mentality, your approach to the play, but a lot of it has to do with bat path. So you got to clean up the bat path first and make sure they're from the inside. I call it swinging from in and out. Um, so that's the first thing. And then, uh, and then just working on, it. you can do certain drills where you just put an emphasis on driving the ball the other way, um, flipping a lot of balls or throwing a lot of balls to the opposite field. Uh Oh, There's a triple. Yeah, I'm gonna give everyone a tip on uh, the spamming thing. If you ask your question like 50 times, I purposely don't read it. <laughs> um, so my advice to you is don't keep writing the same question. Um, so like, especially, um, I also like, I, this is a baseball channel. So if you ask me stuff about like, you know, especially like politics stuff, like I don't even talk about, I don't I don't get involved in politics and all that stuff. So is 81 at 17 good? Um, yeah, you know, I think anyone, I think anything above 80 is, you know, it's not easy. Uh, I was just talking about this, like the average high school pitcher is probably below 80, depending on what state you're in, but. So if you're above 80 and you're in high school, like that's a pretty good arm. Um, you know, typically if you want to play division one baseball, you're going to have to be above 85. Um, 
And so if you're 81, you know, you're a couple miles an hour off. It, it also depends, like, are you touching 81? Are you sitting 81? You know, some kids say like, oh, I throw 81 and they really throw 76 and they've hit 81 once in their life. Some guys say, oh, I throw 81 and they're consistently 81 and they'll pop some 83s and maybe an 84. Um, I don't like beans, no. What do you need to focus on, on the, at the gym for baseball? I think that you should focus on essentially like made, your total body, but major lifts. So I always think like major lifts are like squat, deadlift, uh, some type of press and, and a pull, you know, a chin up or a row or something. If you hit all those, then you can supplement with whatever the hell you want. But if you do the main lifts, I think you're gonna, um, you're gonna build some pretty good strength. Good batting average in high school, impossible to say because high school levels are so different. Like, you know, one league in California versus another league in Vermont versus a league in Florida versus a league in North Dakota. But like every league is so different, even in certain states, you know, you've got a, I don't know how your states go in our state. It's division one, two, three, four, five, six. One's the best. And then the lower you get, you know, in Texas, I think it's the opposite, right? One's the smallest and five's the best or something. So there's big differences between leagues. And so it, it's really hard to say. CSU grad, thank you so much for Super Chat. Do you like a teenager throwing a knuckleball? So I usually don't like knuckleballs because I feel like when you throw a knuckleball, you a knuckleball is kind of like pushed to the plate. And so I don't really like it. Um, Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't run into many teenagers throwing knuckleballs, so. Um, hey, Matt, whenever I swing, my coach tells me I step out. Any tips on, on um, how to fix that, essentially? So what I think of, if I, if I think of hitters stepping out, this isn't always the case, but I feel like if you stay in good posture, if you keep your chest over, keep your butt out and try to hold that position, that will help you kind of stay over the plate and stride straight. You can put a line on the ground and just kind of work on striding straight. I've never had a problem striding open, but I have had problems diving into the plate. And so I had to really work on striding straight. The ideal batting stance, there is no ideal batting stance. So um, I'll say this, my opinion on batting stances. Batting stances are personal preference. Unless the batting stance doesn't allow you to get to a good solid hitting position on time. So you can stand however you want as long as you can get to this position. If you can't get to this position by the way you're standing, then it's not a good stance for you. So... That's how I would, uh, that's how I would say, that's what I would say with that. You can watch a major league game and see there's no ideal batting stance. Every stance is different. Any tips or drills to not pull your head when swinging? Yeah, so I think pulling your head a lot of times, so I just made a video on this not too long ago. A lot of times I feel like the head being pulled is a byproduct of getting a little bit too rotational with the upper body. So as a righty, my left shoulder pulls hard like this and it causes my head to kind of come with my body. And so some of that, again, is good posture. Some of it is learning how to not rotate hard with your upper body. Um, I would I would go watch our videos. I think I have, I don't know the titles of them, but if you go to our hitting playlist, you'll see something about, I might even have one on how to not pull your head or um, something about you know your upper body. You'll find them if you go to our hitting playlist. EJ, thank you for the super chat. Will you do a video on your mean Mercedes greatness? So I did a, um, I did have a video on him. It was in my uh, cup of co half a cup of coffee video, maybe episode two or three. Um, but I haven't followed him the last few days, but he obviously started the year just absolutely amazing. How is an average curveball measured speed or break something else? Well, now with like Rapsodo and um, 
you know, all these other devices that Ooh. I'm tired. My son's woke me up the last two nights in the middle of the night saying he had bad dreams. So I feel like I haven't gotten a lot of sleep lately. Um, so a lot of these devices now are, are measuring spin rate. They're measuring, uh, you know, different types of brakes, vertical brake and horizontal brakes and all these things. And so, um, yeah, that can all, that can determine how good a, a braking pitch is. Um, speed also, I mean, typically the harder you can throw a braking ball, um, typically the harder it is, is to hit. And so I think speed has something to do with it. I do think obviously brake has something to do with it. Um, if you have a Rapsoda unit or something that can read that, then that is one good way to do it. If you've seen a lot of breaking balls, you can, you know, I can, I don't need the machines to tell me a lot. One thing about being a hitter or a former hitter is that, you know, when I'm watching a game, I did this as a, when I was scouting in college too. You know, I would get behind the plate, watch the pitch and could tell instantly like, is this a breaking ball that I want? Like, do I want to face this or would I, you know, would I be like, eh, I don't want to face this guy. You know, that's what you do as a, as a hitter my whole career. You watch a guy throw, I can watch a guy throw in warm-ups and be like, all right, that's a filthy breaking ball right there. Like, I better get on the fastball because I ain't going to hit that breaking ball. And I'm not reading, you know, I don't know the spin rate. I don't know the break or any of that. Numbers-wise, I just see it with my eyes. Um, and I guess you just learn that from seeing a bunch of different you know, you see so many different pitches from so many different guys over your career. What position does Matty Jr. play? Um, well, he's a lefty, so, you know, I guess outfielder first base, but he uh, he's only played T-ball. This will be his first year that he's allowed to play coach pitch. And in T-ball, it's, there are no positions. <laughs> there are no positions. I don't even know in coach pitch if they play positions. We'll find out on Thursday, I guess. Uh, why is everyone so damn concerned with exit velocities? He said, you know what I was, I was actually just going to say, we're getting so many questions on exit velocities and bat speed and all these things. Um, I honestly can't tell you like every age. A lot of people say, what's good? What's a good bat speed or exit speed for a 12 year old, 13 year old, 14 year old, 15 year old, 16 year old. Like, we, like I have those numbers because we have a rap unit and you know, we do keep track of some of that stuff, but I'll say this, I, I've said this a bunch of times. When it comes to pitching velocity, hitting velocity, all that stuff, especially at young ages, like, again, if you're 13, uh, a six foot 13 year old is going to be able to swing much faster than a, than a four foot nine, 67 pounder. So, I don't want to say like a speed and then some little kid that weighs 42 pounds says, well, I should quit baseball because I can't hit anywhere close to that. You shouldn't be able to. You're 42 pounds. So that's why I don't always get too crazy, especially with young kids about, you know, how fast should I throw at 12? How far should I hit the ball? How all of that stuff? Um, the game has definitely transitioned and this is partly because you know, there's so many of these like showcases, everything now that are showing, you know, they have their rankings and their bat speed rankings, exit speed rankings. And everyone thinks like that's all that matters. Uh, exit speed is important. Absolutely. Like to play in the big leagues, like you're going to need a certain exit speed. Like you can't hit the ball 70 miles an hour and play in the big leagues. So, you know, that's all that's well, as I'm saying that right now, look at this. Home runs for Fernando Tatis Jr. Exit velocity, right? 115, 113, 105, 104, 103. So, um, you know, you need to be able to hit the ball at a certain speed. But when you're 13, I think I don't think that's the most important part of the game. Good fastball for a freshman. Uh, I don't know. I would say, uh, again, it's a tough question, but... If you're a freshman and you're throwing 75, I'm going by our guys. If you're throwing 75 and above, I'm like, there's a pretty good arm right there for a freshman.
at what age do pitchers start throwing breaking balls? Um, I would say like our 12 year olds, some of them throw breaking balls, 13 year olds, I would say somewhere in that range. Again, if you show that you can throw it properly and you're not gonna just overthrow it and you throw, you're gonna throw a fastball and not just throw breaking ball after breaking ball after breaking ball, then I think that's fine. How do MLB teams decide who catches the first pitch? I've seen it done a bunch of different ways. I've seen players say, I want to catch it. I've seen teams say, hey, we need somebody to catch the first pitch tonight. Anyone want to do it? I've seen teams say, hey, you're catching first pitch tonight. Like all different ways. Do you still do play crates? Yep, I still get play crates every every month. Uh, 11 you. why do travel ball coaches expect players to come in polish instead of focusing on coaching them up at their position? That's a great question. I'm not sure. Um, this is my first year coaching 11U baseball. I coach our 11 year old team. And, um, you know, it's one thing that I, I have to learn as well. I think I've told this story before. Oh, there's a pitch rod, the left single for Tatis. Um, I'll say this about coaching. Can you make the MLB at an average school? Yeah, you can make the MLB from any school. Uh, how bad your school is has nothing to do with how good you can be. So um, here's one thing. Let me give you a, a thing about, about coaching. One thing that I learned. Um, when I start coaching, one of the first things I realized, probably one of the first things that I, I learned was that you can't assume anything. Uh, when I left professional baseball playing for eight years and, and started coaching at college, I was shocked. Like I assumed everyone knew that everything that I knew. And why did I assume that? I don't know. Cause I'm an idiot, I guess. Clearly I've been playing professional baseball, the highest level of baseball you can play for eight years. Clearly I know more than some kid just coming out of high school. Sometimes you forget like what you knew at certain levels. And even though maybe you're just a really smart player and you know, not everyone knows the game as well as you. So that's like one of the first things I learned. I had to teach myself, I guess, is don't assume anything. I did that. You know, I remember my first time really, really coaching at Holy Cross. And, uh, you know, I didn't coach certain things because I just thought everyone knew it. I remember when the tag up at second base, you know, when do we tag up at second with how many outs? When do we not tag up? When do we get off and read the ball? Like all that stuff. I, I, I literally assumed that. I was like, this sounds, this is like the easiest stuff ever. Like obviously everyone here knows this. Then we started playing in scrimmages in the fall and I'm like, how do you not, like we're messing up. And I'm like, how do you not know this? Like, what are we doing? And I started asking kids and I'm like, I'm like, what do you do with no outs and a fly ball? And they're like, uh, and they give answers. You know, I, uh, I, I uh, get halfway. I'm like, no, why would, and then I started realizing like, I'm an idiot for assuming everyone knows this. So that's, that was me when I first started coaching. So now at 11 you, I really try to tell myself, assume that they know nothing. That's, I, I try to go in with that type of mentality, assume they know nothing and then, um, and then coach from there. And cause there are some 11 year olds that know nothing. Uh, Byron, I feel like I was just answering your question the whole time, but you, you keep asking the same question. I must have done a poor job of answering it. Um, Matt, what's the best life lesson you learned from baseball? Well, I think baseball teaches you a lot of stuff. Um, I'm thinking, I'm just thinking about what's the best life lesson I learned. Well, I think one thing about, this isn't just about baseball, this is probably anything, but just, you know, I, I dedicated a lot of my time to baseball, to being a really good baseball player. And I think what it takes to be a really good baseball player uh, will help you do anything else that you want to do. Like, I feel like one of the reasons that, um, we talked about this last week. One of the reasons why I feel confident that I can do other things like, you know, build a, a business, like build Antenna Baseball or build a YouTube channel or whatever is just basically I approach it the exact same way I approach baseball. 
training for baseball. So like, um, like simple things like time management, like um, uh, self-discipline, um, you know, as a baseball player, you have to practice, you have to train, you have to eat. I didn't eat great, but um, there's a lot of things that go into it. And so you have to do things that maybe you don't want to do when you need to do it. Um, you know, what's self-discipline? What does Nick Saban say? It's doing what needs to be done when it needs to be done, whether you want to do it or not. Like, I think that has a lot to do with pretty much everything. Um, what needs to be done and then doing it when it needs to be done, uh, whether you feel like doing it or not, because there's a lot of times where you don't feel like doing it, but you have to do it anyway. And uh, I feel like with anything in life, if you want to be good at something, if you want to do something well, you're going to have to do it sometimes when you don't feel like it. If you're only going to do it when you feel like it, it's probably not going to get done a whole lot. So we could talk about this for a long time. So I'll, I'll move on to another thing. I'm going to do a few more questions and then I'm going to, uh, then I'm going to go to bed. What are some things I can do to build arm strength? Um, so I think some of it's mechanics. So, you know, figuring out, you know, is there something on, on going wrong with the way you use your body? Um, I think I'm uh, getting more explosive in the weight room helps that help me throw harder. I think just throwing the ball, throwing the ball hard, throwing the ball far, training yourself to do that. You know, whether that's playing long toss or just, um, you know, if you want to get better at throwing, you got to throw. Uh, do you ever find it surreal that you actually made it to the major leagues? Um, I actually never really find it surreal. Um, I would say actually I find it more, not surreal, that's not the right word. I find it more strange that I didn't play better in the major leagues um, or just play longer. There's a lot of things that are kind of out of your control sometimes, but um, I don't think I've ever thought like, oh man, I can't believe I made it to the major leagues. I would say that uh, I always saw myself playing in the major leagues. And so getting there wasn't like a shock. Um, so yeah. Grant, thank you so much for the super chat. My fastball is 84 and slider is 78. Should I try to create more of a speed difference between hard pitches and off speed? Um, I don't think you're actually that far off with slider and, and fastball. You know, could this, I wouldn't probably try to take speed off of the slider. Um, you might want one other pitch that, you know, I don't know if you want to add a change up to that or, um, or something else, but I actually don't think that that's too bad of a difference between the fastball and the slider. I guess it probably depends on what the slider looks like too and how much movement that has. Do major leaguers sometimes take things for granted? Um, I'm sure some do. I mean, I, I think, I'm sure a lot of people take things for granted, not just major leaguers. Uh, yes, son. Is it hard to hit a cutter or changeup? Uh, I personally hate hitting cutters, but if someone has a filthy changeup, that can be really hard to hit too. How do you get hitter at bet, bet? How do you get hitter? How do you get better at hitting curveballs? Well, you can practice on a curveball machine. I think a lot of times hitting off-speed pitches a lot has to do with your just your overall mechanics. Um, you know, how well do you control your weight as you're striding forward? If you're always leaping forward and transferring your weight or shifting your weight early, you're going to have a hard time hitting off speed. If you got a crappy bat path, you're going to have a hard time hitting off speed. So good to see you too, Peter. Do D1 college coaches go to state championship games? Um, some do. I 
I mean, I don't think a D1 college is just saying like, oh, I'm just going to go watch a state championship game because it's a state championship game, but. Uh, D Powers, you you did get here before it's over, but it's, it's ending in like a minute because I have to go to bed. <laughs> what makes knuckleballers so hard to hit? Um... Well, I just think you don't face knuckleballers very often, so it's just different, you know? It's almost like when you see a major, like you see major leaguers hit like fast pitch softball pitchers and they can't hit it because they don't see it. You know, if you gave them enough time to be able to see the see it, they'd figure it out. Uh, same thing with knuckleballers, you don't ever face knuckleballers. <laughs> Jeff Fry is a troll. Um, I, I don't know Jeff Fry at all. I know that people send me stuff being like, oh yeah, he's making fun of your stuff or whatever. I don't, uh, one thing that I've learned with social media, uh, and having like a good amount of followers is that a lot of people are going to really like what you do. So a lot of people are going to really love what you do. And a lot of people are going to really not like what you do. And so I try not to focus on, um, I try not to focus on the people that don't like the stuff I do and focus on the people that do like the stuff that I do. Not to say that I don't try to learn things, you know, some people, uh, if they're constructive with the way they say it, I've talked to plenty of people like, oh, you know, you should try doing this or, you know, what do you think about this? Um, definitely. There's some people that just like scream and yell and, um, you know, those people you just try to ignore. But there's so many people that like will be like, oh, can you believe, look at what this guy was saying about you on this or that. I'm like, I, I don't even look for it. I don't really care. Like people, people are going to say um, mean stuff and just call you an idiot and, and all that stuff. So I'm not even going to waste my, why waste my time getting upset about it? Thanks, Eric. Uh, do I think that, uh, thanks Nate. Do I think the Patriots will trade up? I think it all depends on who's there. I, uh, more and more thinking the Patriots are not going to draft a receiver in the, or a receiver, a quarterback early. Um, I personally think that with all the quarterbacks going off the board, unless the Patriots just have some guy that, they feel is rated higher than, you know, all these other guys and he falls to them at 15, but you know, you're not going to get Trevor Lawrence. You know, you're, you're, um, you're not going to get Wilson. You know, you're not going to get, um, probably, I don't know. Some people say Mac Jones is going to, uh, to the 49ers. So like now you're, you're, and then who knows if the fourth pick is going to go to a quarterback, going to be a quarterback too. So I find it hard that they to believe they're going to trade up to get a quarterback, the fourth or the fifth best quarterback. Um, so me personally, I would take advantage of all these quarterbacks going early. And, and now you're getting other positions. You're getting better value at other positions. I personally would, would be taking, not taking a quarterback in the first round. Um, that's what I would do. Domino's or Pizza Hut? Domino's. Cutoff man versus relay man. Biggest difference. Um, I think at a high level of baseball, of baseball, the relay man doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, or not as much. When you're young, everything's a relay man because you can't reach the bases. When you get older... You can reach bases on your own, so you don't need relay men. Relay men. Uh, almost everything becomes a cutoff. It's a redirect. You know, I'm here to. I, I I'm here to basically cut the ball off and redirect it to a different base. I'm not just going to relay it, and, unless you have like a, like a, a, you know, a tandem relay where the ball's hitting the gap, and you're going to send two guys out, and we're going to relay that ball home. Um, but other than that, it, it's very, very uncommon to have a relay. And it's almost always a cutoff and a redirect. Can a freshman make varsity? Sure, why not? Depends on your school. Oh, St. John's prep varsity. Um, yeah, you can, but it's it happens, it seems, less and less um, now. But a 
Landon, thank you so much for Super Chat. Hey, Matt Chairs from Savannah, Georgia. Hey, Landon, thank you very much for the Super Chat and Chairs. All right, everyone, last question right here, and then I am going to bed. I don't know what time it is. It's 11 o'clock. I got a lot of stuff. And I'm going to make a video for you guys tomorrow. You guys were asking about Tatis and stealing signs, and so if you think that'll be a good video, I'll make that for you in the morning when I get up. Last question is going to be... Scott Jeffrey, how much of your big league salary did you save? Um, I saved almost all of my big league salary. Actually, you know, you want to know what I did with my big league salary? This was pretty smart of me. Not going to lie. Um, every check I got, almost every check I got in the big leagues, I bought Apple stock with it. And uh, I still own all of it today. So... You can do the math on how well that worked out. Um, anyways, that's all we have. Thank you for uh, the Super Chats. Thank you so much for, for the questions. And uh, hopefully you guys all learned something. You skipped my question all night. I've been here for 30 minutes. Oh, no. Uh, I'm sure I skipped a lot of people's questions. There was like 8,000 questions coming through. So if I didn't answer your question tonight... Um, I'm sorry about that. I did the best I could. Um, can you do the stream again? So I've been doing this stream every third, every Sunday night. I've been doing this. Uh, so always keep an eye out on Sunday nights for this. That's usually a night where I don't have baseball and I have a, an hour or so. Tonight was an hour and a half. Um, but I do have a very busy day of baseball tomorrow. I've got five or six lessons and... Uh, and I've got emails and got to get ready for the next week of games and just tons of stuff. So probably got a nice like 12 hour day of work tomorrow. And, uh, and so I got to get to bed so I can get going. All right, everyone. Thanks again for hanging out and, uh,